And here we go with the week one review. Please bear with me as I'm shaking off the rust, getting ready for a new season of video producing. First three plays we're going to take a look at demonstrate the point that if we take control of things early, we might prevent a lot of fouls. We've got a dead ball officiate. We've got to officiate away from the ball. Let's take a look at the first three plays. Let's watch these two players here. Nothing arises to the level of a foul for certain, but they snuggle each other to the ground, and the H isn't even looking in that direction. We've got to have better off-ball officiating because this type of action just leads to other things. Get in there and let the players know that you are watching. And when we don't get in early and talk to these two players, like on the last play, it just continues to escalate. And we're here we have an ugly takedown and no flag. All takedowns like this have to be flagged. But could this have possibly been prevented by getting in there earlier on the prior play and just saying, hey guys, break it up, break it up, break it up. Think about it. Looks like we got a little storyline developing here. On this play, we've got missed offensive holding. We're going to see the same left guard tackle a defensive end again. Three yards downfield on a pass play. Probably not enough for IDP. But this is the third time in three plays that these two players ended up on the ground. This is a takedown. Yeah, the ball's being released, but we want to call all takedowns. But the point is, if two plays earlier, we would have gotten in there as a physical presence and a voice saying, Hey guys, I'm watching, I'm watching. Cut it out. We might have prevented this. The point is, you've got to continue to off-ball officiate. Get in, let these players know you're there, and you're watching. Next, we're going to take a look at six plays dealing with various types of illegal defenses. First play from scrimmage, first play of the season for the crew. We've got to be focused. Defensive back inside the belt, he's not aligned on anybody we got to have a flag down. We know where the belt is, right? Looking at the umpire at 6, linebackers at 5, and our defenders clearly inside the belt, unaligned. We need to have a flag down on this. Remember, our basic rule, where's the linebacker got a blitz? Right up the A-gap, right? Anytime he goes outside the defensive end or outside the offensive guard, we have an illegal outside blitz. Keep an eye on the quarterback here. This is a run all the way. So we do not have an illegal outside blitz. We like to say the backer guessed correctly on run, and we're good here. Correct, no call. If the quarterback here set up in a passing posture, then we would want a flag down for illegal outside blitz. Look at the linebacker. He's definitely outside the end of the guard, but it's a run play, so correct, no call. Good judgment by the crew. And here we are later in the game. Let's watch this player here. He's inside the belt. Right now, he's aligned, isn't he? Good job by the wing official flagging this. He's going to go inside, and he's just going to plant. Take a look. He has no intention of going with that receiver. He's just planting inside in run support. He makes no effort to keep up with that motion receiver as we preach, so he gets no benefit of the doubt, and this is a great call right there. He has no intention of moving with that receiver. Our wing sees it. He just wants run support. Of course, it comes right at him, and he assists in the tackle. So good job by the wing getting this. Nice work. Take your pick on this one. Our umpire is in the offensive backfield. Let's watch our linebacker aligned at the back of the box. Remember, he doesn't have to be towing that line based on the 2019 rule change. But he's in the box. Is he stationary at the snap? He is not. Umpire sees it, flags it. We also have a defender here inside the belt. And we can see he's aligned right now, isn't he? He's inside the belt. Whoops, that's the wrong uh, telestrator. There we go. He's aligned, right? We see that. However, our receiver is going to break off to the inside, and our fella here just decides to plant in run support. Watch what I mean. See that? We got no problem with a flag down for defender inside the belt. 
He's not making a real attempt to go across with the uh, receiver. So we got no problem. He's playing run support. He's not making an attempt. So we can support a call for this defender here being inside the belt, not a line. We'll slow it down just a bit as he approaches the line of scrimmage. He has no intention of staying with that receiver, so we got two for the price of one here. Take your pick. Early in the season, early in the game, I think this is the 12th play of the game. What do we see? Goal line is the belt, right? We call the goal line tight. Toes, foot, shin in front of the line. Toes in front of the line. No alignment here. And he can't align on that guy anyway. We've got him, both these players, illegally inside the belt. Got alignment here. We've got alignment here. We've got alignment here. So we're good. But as the evaluator said on this one, this is a layup. we got to get this. When the goal line is the belt, we call it tight. That ain't close. We need flags down for this. New officials, be aware. Look at our linebacker here. The goal line is the belt. When the goal line is the belt, we call it tight. And look what we have. We've got toes in front of the line. Heels on the goal line. This is a foul. Yes, the initial reaction is, hey, this is a ticky-tack foul. Might think that, but when the goal line is the belt, we call it tight. You're going to see the well-coached teams have their toes on the line. Let's review. He's aligned. He can be in front of the line. He's aligned. He can be in front of the line. He's aligned. He can be in front of the line. He is a backer on the back of the belt. His toes are in front of the line. Back judge sees it and flags it. Let's put that flag in a quiet area. We're not. Uh, it's not a spot foul, so just drop a flag in a quiet area. But for the newer officials, the goal line is the belt. We do call it tight. This is not a ticky-tack call. Next up, i got about 10 or 11 plays dealing with various types of mechanics. Let's take a look. Let's watch our back judge here. You can see he just uh, counted and confirmed. Now he's going to do a slide from side to side. What's he checking? The splits of the defensive end. He's going to check that one and then go back to the other side. Now, just prior to the snap, it looks like we get in a little closer. There might be some daylight in here between uh, shoulder to shoulder. It's close. No problem not throwing here. But go ahead and issue a warning. Put it in the foul report. Hey, I warned number 16 or whatever number he is that he uh, needs to get inside a little tighter. Talk, 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 and then uh, if they don't listen, go ahead and throw the flag. Now here's a sideline shot of the same play. Uh, you can see, I mean, it's a parallax, camera parallax issue here, so we don't have a straight down the line shot here. But this defensive end is pretty far outside. And for purposes of replay, if this play was challenged and there was a flag down on the field, what the referee looking? He's looking right in there, the back judge. And with the end zone shot on the prior, prior camera shot we had, you could probably see, hey, there's daylight, but we've got an official looking right in there. So we would definitely stand this call. And from this camera parallax, we also see our back judge looking in, right in there. He's got a good angle, and even from this angle, we can probably see there is probably not enough space there, so back judge ruled it egregious here. And remember, it's a big advantage for these defensive ends if they get an outside release real quick. Any advantage they can get lining up outside, but our back judge has a good angle in here. He sees daylight. He flags it and continues to officiate the play. Unfortunately, we had interception on this play, but uh, I think the foul was there. It was big. But remember, if it's close, go ahead and warn, but I think we're good here, especially with the angle of the back judge looking right in there. Defensive ends, you need to tighten up. Here we're in goal line mechanics, snapped inside the 10, right? So what do we want? Wings to the goal line and then work back to the spot. To the goal line, work back to the spot. What's the exception to the rule? What do we got here? 
Look in close. It is fourth down, right? Line to gain is more important than the goal line here. So we'd want our wings to to the line to gain till it's no longer threatened. Then continue on your way if needed. And then we won't get ourselves into this kind of situation where we got a tight play at the line to gain. First try of the game. Watch our umpire. He's going to do some preventive officiating. The guy moves in. We don't want to flag down on this, okay? Better common sense. Good job preventive officiating, but here we're early in the game. There's no advantage here. Hold the flag. If that guy somehow blocks the kick, okay, we can drop a late flag, but let's use a little bit more common sense. Let's not be flag happy. You tapped him in. He slid in a little bit. No advantage gain. Keep the flag in your pocket, especially this early in the game. Good job by the umpire here identifying the blitzing linebacker. Remember, we got two at the back of the box, so we do have to point. If we got two at the back of the box, hold that point until the snap, and then watch our back judge give us some really good goal line coverage on a long play. Reads it, steps up to the goal line play coming underneath. He's waiting right there for it. Nice work. Let's watch our umpire here. A little bit of preventive officiating. His defensive end's a little too wide outside shoulder to shoulder. He taps him in. Good job preventing a foul, but unfortunately, I think we had to delay a game here. Good job by the umpire. Good job preventive officiating by the umpire here, tapping him in, right? Remember what we say about preventive officiating, though. If you got to do it and it's going to get you out of position, it doesn't here. Don't do it. Just flag him. But here, good job tapping him in, getting back into position. Just remember the warning. Don't kill yourself preventive officiating if it's going to take you out of, out of your position. I want you to watch the umpire here, preventive officiating. Any linebackers watching this tape, during the game, you might have the umpire pull you back like he does here. He's just trying to help you out, make sure you're not committing a foul inside the belt. Good job by the umpire here. Line judge here gets a really good spot. The receiver is going to juggle the ball as he's driven back from the B5, and he doesn't complete the catch until he's at about the 9. And you see our wing in perfect uh, goal line mechanics. He's to the goal line, work back to the spot. No need to hurry back to the spot, but look at the focus. Whoops, the ball pops up, driven back to about the 8 or 9. Really good spot. I want you to watch the uh, good nonverbal communication between the wings on this play regarding the spot. Looks like our wing at the bottom of the screen is a nice, soft spot and holds it, and the H can go uh, clean up what needs to be cleaned up in here. Good job. Next, we have our weekly reminder type plays for the new officials. Uh, usually on each week's training tape, we have a wide assortment of plays that don't fit into a specific category that week, and we just kind of jump all over the place and take a look. So here's about 10 or 11 plays to take a look at and remind you of certain things. Here we go. We'll let this play out uh, live from the TV broadcast, but let's note what down it. It's fourth down, right? Crew needs to be notifying each other, hey, it's fourth down, things can happen, as it does on this play. I think the uh, crew, bottom line is, because of the referee, he saved the crew, they got it right. I don't think anyone was aware of the fourth down fumble rule, which occurred here. Referee came in and saved the day. I understand we don't want to be blowing our whistles, uh, a lot of reaction time, gosh, I, I got a live ball, I don't want to kill it. But the point is, it is fourth down, so let's think about what might would ha might happen, and let's take a look at Rule 7.5D, which talks about our fourth down fumble rule. But nice job by the referee coming in and saving the crew. Let's listen in live. Bernard hit as he throws, picked up by one of his linemen. He'll bring it upfield. He will be up over the 20-yard line to the 21, and that's a first down and a heads-up play by that offensive lineman, Dominic Logan, who, <laughs> strangely enough, was the one that obviously ran into the quarterback a little bit ago. Oh, I shouldn't say he ran into the quarterback. They uh, kind of collided with one another, but heads up, both of them saw. 77 is not the fumbler. Now we should be blowing it dead, but again, I understand. Thinking, real-time, live ball, what do we do here? Remember, fourth down, let's signal, let's roll our fists. Let your crew, everyone, acknowledge to each other, we got fourth down, this might occur. Oh, that ball on the ground, and he picked it up and took off upfield to get the first down. Well, Sean Hill beat, beat his man 
man uh, around uh, that outside and you got around, you'll see Sean coming from the outside. He gets to the arm of Bernard, that ball's falling loose, but very alert play. Very alert play by Logan to pick that ball up. Really on the first field down. was a fumble, it was fourth down. Once the offensive player that did not fumble the, the ball originally cannot advance it, therefore the ball was dead as soon as the Cedar Rapids line and recovered it. The ball's dead, turn over on down, first down, Quad Cities. How do you like that announcement? Nice job. I love the mic action in Cedar Rapids. They do a good job with that. Nice job by the referee here saving the crew. But be aware, fourth down, the fumble roll. Let's take a look at our chain crew here. Where are they supposed to be in the end zone? The snap is imminent. We've got, uh, looks like three of them pretty close. Let's take care of this in the pregame. Make sure these uh, chain crews are out of the way. And if we've got a safety issue like we might have here, don't hesitate to shut the play down. I know we want to get these games over quickly, but in this case, the snap is imminent, and those chain guys are in a little bit of danger. I mean, look at these guys. So don't hesitate. If you've got to shut it down, go ahead and shut it down. Safety first. Here we're going to have a correct no call for DPI in the end zone. Um, nothing here. Good job by the DB timing the ball coming in. Now, he's not playing the ball, right? So radar goes up. We've got a DB not playing the ball. So all contact is suspect right there. He's not playing the ball. However, he times it perfectly with his contact and correct no call. Good judgment by the wing and the back judge on this play. On this play, we're going to have a correct call for holding by the left guard here. He's going to do a quick grab and restrict that's going to take the player right there out of the throwing lane of the passer. So that's a good big one right there. Good restriction right there. The dip pulls the defender away and out of the passing lane of the quarterback. So this is a correct call for holding. Nice job by the ref. It's indoor football time. we got to think about illegal contact. So let's talk about our keys first. Remember, they're set at the snap. So our line judge is across the field here. Our back judge is here. Our H is here. I want you to watch the illegal contact against this receiver down here about uh, the 10 yard line or so, okay? Now we know where the belt is, right? And we know the umpire is at six, so that's going to be our ICT line. We stay on our keys for two seconds, we're going to see the foul. Let's watch the action on our inside receiver downfield. 1 1002, he's blown up at the 10 yard line. If you stay on your keys, for two seconds, you're going to see this. Illegal contact within the healthy five. Back judge should be switching over to zone by now. Anyway, that's right in front of him. Back judge needs to see this. Unthreatened here, so our line judge should still be on his key for those initial two seconds. And somebody has got to get this illegal contact, which is almost uh, eight yards downfield. Illegal contact. We allow the healthy five. This is about eight yards downfield. Again, you're going to hear the count. One 1,002, boom, there's the foul. Need a flag. There's a reason we want our line judges holding the line of scrimmage till the ball crosses here. The quarterback goes outside the alley, escapes the rush, throws the ball away. Where is it hit? Nine-yard line. What's our line judge do? Our line judge reports to the referee that ball never made it past the line of scrimmage, so we've got intentional grounding. Now, what was interesting on this play, this occurred in the last 30 seconds of the half, so we've got the uh, Zap 10 situation. Let's listen in. Lots of doubt. It also involves a 10 second runoff with San Diego would like to exercise, but Bismarck has decided to take their second time out to avoid the 10 second runoff. Here's a kick play. We're going to miss uh, illegal hands to face, and we're going to see the re receiving team player. It's going to be these two right here. He's got two hands up in the face, driving the head back to the point. You're going to see him rip the helmet off. And uh, our official down here at the bottom of the screen is watching the ball. 
He's got nothing in front of him other than that action. Nothing else to look at but to see that block. We got to have this. It's a safety foul. And takes the helmet right off. Need a flag down on that. Over the past several seasons, we've talked about how we don't like to offset UNSs. We like to get the instigator if we can. But this is the 15th play of the game. I think we could have done a lot of good here with a couple of flags for the UNSs. There's a lot of pushing and shoving going on. I think we're going to see a couple players hit the turf here. So getting a couple of the instigators here and nailing them with their first UNS probably help us uh, throughout the game. Um, I think our umpire here had a flag for uh, illegally inside the belt. We saw that earlier on the video. But nice job by the crew getting in with a physical presence and voice. But a couple of UNS fouls here. Let's uh, tee up a couple of these players with their first UNS, and that will get us good control of the game. It's like the third play of the game. Let's watch the action between these two players here. This is a correct call. Get this stuff early. Take control of the game. little push there. And then the opposing headbutt. That is 15. Correct call. Let's be crystal clear. We have zero tolerance for any type taunt. Nice job by the line judge. Looking down the line and see number five with a standover taunt. This is a correct call. We will get 100% of these this season. Nice job. We'll close out uh, this week three plays dealing with replay. We understand replay is going to be real difficult because all of you are on-field officials, not replay officials, and we don't have a replay official on site. Perhaps that will change in the future, but for 2020, the referee and his assistant are going to have to make the decision on the field. Just keep in mind, we don't have the NCAA IVE review standard. We're just a notch below that mostly because we certainly don't have tons of camera angles at the arena. Sometimes we only have two angles to look at. If you've got to use that telescreen, look at it. Use what is available at the arena to decide these plays. Know what our standard is and do the best you can as you work our way through it. So let's take a look, take a look at three plays from last week that are uh, good teaching plays for replay. Here we go. New challenge rule this year, whether a score has occurred or not. Here the ruling on the field was the runner was down at the one-yard line, so if a coach wanted to challenge this play, he could to determine whether or not a score occurred or not. We can't tell much from this angle, but if, in fact, coach may have a different angle that he thinks his uh, player here scored a touchdown, he could challenge it to determine whether a touchdown was scored or not. And let's see if the uh, vid swap sideline shot gives us any help at all down here in the corner. Okay, we looking at a different angle. When's the ball possessed and is he touched? Doesn't look like from there. It looks like he is not touched. But uh, slow it down one more time. And this is the vid swap sideline angle. What forces him to the wall? Kind of tough to see there. Let's go to the, uh, see if we got the YouTube shot available. And here's the YouTube shot. And remember, when you're at the arena, you can use any available shot that you have to include looking up at the tell screen. But remember, we don't have IVE as our standard for reviewing it. Rather, it's the referee and his discretion must be convinced by the video, video replay that a reversal is warranted, or creation, obviously, is warranted. And that doesn't mean we need to be beyond all doubt by indisputable video evidence which is the NCAA standard. We're just a little bit below that. Use your discretion. If the call needs to be changed well, based on what the ref sees, go ahead and change it. Get it correct to the best of our ability using our IFL philosophy and review of the play. Now here, would we be able to create the score? Or if a score was called, would we be able to reverse it to a non-score? Well, I don't think so. And this is probably the best shot we have here. It's a down-the-line shot, but we can't determine. It's just not HD enough. Whether he was touched or not, we can't tell right there. You can't tell. My gut tells me he probably scored here and was not touched, but even with the lesser IFL standard, 
the correct ruling here should be if a touchdown was ruled, we would stand the touchdown. If a touchdown was not ruled and the offensive coach challenged that we had a score, we would stand the call of a non-score. So there's just enough, just not enough either way to convince us by the video to change the call on the field. We just can't tell. That's how we want you to proceed forward with these calls. On this play, the ruling on the field is touchdown. The defensive head coach challenged that OPI was committed. We went to review, and this is an in and out. We can clearly see it's not even close. There's no OPI. The receiver has not created separation. There's not even a little hand fighting. It looks like he's just swatting away at a fly, but there's nothing here to warrant a call for OPI. So you got to love when the crew can just get in and out and confirm that the ruling on the field was correct. This would be a confirmation not a stance. It's not even close. Nice job by the crew. Now here's a tough one. We've got an interception, no flag down for DPI, so of course, uh, why not? The offensive coach challenges that we have DPI on the field. The sideline shot from VidSwap didn't help us, but let's slow it down here. Remember, we don't have IVE as our standard, so we're looking at where that ball is, and right now, we can see, let's see, the ball is right here, and we've got the contact occurring. It looks like the DB, and we're going to see it from another angle, is pulling the shoulder down. The restriction has already started. The ball's a little closer, but we've got the one-armed receiver. So when you have the one-armed receiver, the antenna need to be going up. Remember, we don't have IVE as our standard. We don't need proof beyond a reasonable doubt. But if there's enough there by what we have, go ahead and make the decision. As I think here, we could have created the foul. I sent this out, and I uh, had a couple people look at it. With our standard, I think we could have created the foul. But let's look at the YouTube shot. And here's the YouTube shot. I think it shows just a little bit more that perhaps this is not bang, bang. We can see the restriction starting right about now he's got his arm in there and he's pulling his shoulder down right there and the ball is still away let's look at it again these are tough but if we've got the evidence here make the right decision I think the right decision here would be to create DPI and that's what the evaluator said too I spread this around to a couple people and they all are in agreement now Let's get that. The restriction is starting, and the ball hasn't even, you can see, even with the crappy film that we have here, the ball is not even in bang-bang territory, and the receiver is getting pulled down. You can kind of see it right here when we slow it down. I'm not sure exactly whether the crew had this shot or not, but this, you can see the receiver's shoulder being dipped, and it, the dip had already started. The ball hasn't arrived. There's enough restriction right there. And when you see the one-armed receiver, that's a key many times. I mean, receivers aren't going to make a one-armed catch most times. They're trying to get that second arm up. And I think here uh, the proper ruling on the field would have been to create the DPI foul. Big restriction there. We could have created these foul. This is tough, but the crew did get in and out in under 90 seconds, so good job. Not sure exactly what angle they had on the field, but I think there is enough here uh, to create. You see he's getting dipped there, and the ball's not even close. Probably enough here to create the foul of DPI. And if we go back to our vid swap, there's the ball. Restriction starting. The ball is well away. The shoulder dip's occurring right there. Here comes the one arm, and you can still follow the ball flight here. It's not even close to hitting the receiver, and he's being dipped. And there goes one arm up, try to make the catch. So I think that would kind of confirm, hey, we've got DPI on this play. So we could have created the foul here. Again, this is the vid swap end zone shot, which I believe the crew had. I'm not sure if they can slow it down like we can here, but uh, I think there's enough there to create the foul. Under our standard. NCAA standard, not going to do it. 
IFL standard. I think the restriction is there, right there. Ball's not even close. Go ahead and create the foul. And that wraps up week one. I tried to keep it at 30 minutes. Lord knows what's going to happen next week when we have five games. This past week we only had two. But uh, lots of officiating to occur this coming week. Go out there, shake off that rust, have a great game. Big Brother's going to be watching. Thank you for your attention.